Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale accessory review video. Now today we are taking a look at another Hall of Armor, this time for Batman. And there's something about this set that makes it very very special indeed. That Batman suit that you're seeing in the Hall of Armor right now isn't the Hot Toys Batman figure. No, this actually comes with a full 1-6 scale statue version of the BVS suit, so you can display it in this armory and not have to sacrifice your Hot Toys figure because, let's be honest, that guy is insanely awesome in his own right and he can pull off a ton of awesome poses. Why would you want to just take the mouth out and eyes and pop him in the armory? This, in my opinion, is the way to go. You get the best of both worlds. Now, to get the best of both worlds, it does come at a premium. This piece is rather expensive, so do bear that in mind. Also, it's unlicensed, so whoever it was that actually made this don't hold the correct intellectual property rights to actually create this item. So do bear that in mind when you're making your purchasing decisions. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I've included the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is not a promotional video, this is an item that I picked up for my own personal collection, and of course I decided to review it. Now we will be comparing the statue inside the hall itself to the Hot Toys figure throughout the course of the video, and putting the Hot Toys Batman in the armory as well, just to give you an idea of how that looks. What we are going to do now though, is take the Batman statue out of the armory and take a closer look. And here we have the BVS suit statue up close and personal. Now I have to say, when I first saw the initial pictures, I was super hyped because this, in my opinion, literally just standing there, actually looks better to me than the Hot Toys suit. And the way they were able to do that is because it's all fully sculpted. So they can have a ton of texture and all of the wrinkles and creases and folds and make it look as HD as they want it to. Whereas for Hot Toys, they are kind of locked in to having to use an actual fabric suit which means they can't really replicate this texture, which is very accurate to the movie. I'm loving the way this looks. Now let's start off by talking about the cowl itself first. The way it attaches to the body is very simple. There are some peg holes and there are some pegs and it literally just slots in there. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, try and use the Hot Toys cowl and cape and then you can have a proper fabric cape rather than this because it is a fully sculpted candy shell piece. It is very very nicely textured though, it looks the way it should, and there is a decent level of tattering along the bottom. The only annoying thing for me personally is it sits a little bit lower than his shoes. So you can't have this guy just standing up in your display if you don't want to use him in the armory because the cape does prevent that. If you wanted to have it hanging over the edge of a display base, in the pictures they showed they used a Hot Toys Justice League display base, then yeah, you can totally do that. As for the cowl itself, the shape is great and the texture is phenomenal. It does have just a hole for the eyes and the mouth there, which of course it should, it's accurate to the film, there was nothing on the inside when the suit was on display. He also has the cape folds going over the shoulder, which is the way that it should be done. As for the texture on the suit, it looks glorious. There is a ton of sculpted in detail here, and then airbrushing on all of the musculature. It looks dirty, it looks wrinkly and worn. He's got scratches and nicks here and there, especially down here on the belt. These are actually separate moving pieces and the belt is a fabric piece. So I guess if you did want to move it around, you could totally do that or remove it entirely if that's something you'd like to do. 
Now there is one inaccuracy and it's on the gloves. This second sort of gold knuckle piece shouldn't be there. It should just be this one on the top. But other than that, this guy is pretty darn accurate. He's got the gold fins, the accurate sculpting for the gauntlets, the hand wraps are present, and so too are all of the knuckles on the front of the hand there. So yeah, I can totally forgive that little inaccuracy right there. I'm tempted to just get some black paint and paint over it myself, and then it'll be a total non-issue. Coming down to the legs, you can see how chonky these thighs are, and I love all of the wrinkles that are sculpted in. It's also asymmetrical, so they're different on one side versus the other, which is of course how it would be IRL. Coming down to the boots, they also do share this same sort of leather grain look like the cape. This is a great effect. It does an awesome job of making it look like a fabric piece. There is a ton of texture. You can feel it. It's an actual visceral item. And the same thing can be said for the boots themselves. And you can see they even got the little blades on the side of these top parts of the boots. So yeah, they've done their research in terms of the suit itself. On the underside, you even have some tread on the base of the boots there. Overall, I know this isn't the main draw for the set, but I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't for me. This piece right here was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to get this darn thing in the first place. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Now for those of you wondering how the statue connects to the base plate itself, as you can see, when you remove him, there are two metal rods. When you bring in your Batman, he has two holes in the soles of his boots, and of course, very simply and easily, you slot him in there. The statue itself is relatively hefty, so this is a very decent, positive and sturdy connection between the Batman statue and the display base. However, if you don't want those rods there, you can opt to remove them if you just like to have your Hot Toys BVS Batman standing on the base, or you could literally just put his feet right in front of them. Now, for those of you out there who have the Hot Toys BVS Batman and you'd rather display it in the armory, you can totally do that. Here he is literally just standing there. It's very straightforward. It's a platform, so of course he was going to be able to stand in there. You can, of course, remove the mouth plate and the eyes and do the empty suit look, but I did leave them in here for the purpose of this shot so you can see the difference between the statue version of the suit and this guy standing in the armory. Either way, I really like the way this looks also, but as I said in the intro to the video, I'm absolutely going to be going with the statue version of the suit for my display with the BVS Batman. I'd much rather have this guy fully set up as Batman in the display alongside Superman and Wonder Woman rather than just standing here in this piece, although it does look really, really awesome. What do you think though? Would you, if you picked up this piece, display your BVS Batman in the armory or just go with the statue? Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the statue on the left and the Hot Toys BVS figure on the right. As you can see, they both look fantastic in their own right. Take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt because it all will come down to your personal preference. At the end of the day, we all have our favourites and that's all that matters. But to me, I'm starting to prefer just the overall aesthetics of the statue compared to the figure. Let's talk about why. Well, number one, he is a little bit taller. He's more beefy. He's broader as well. The definition of the muscle, thanks to all of that airbrushing on the muscles themselves, makes it pop. The slightly lighter colour to the suit with the darker shading, yeah, it just works. Now I know why Hot Toys couldn't do that, because they're actually making a fully poseable thing. They couldn't get the muscle suit and the fabric of the outer suit to connect the same way the statue has sculpted it. It just literally isn't possible if you want to retain all of that range of motion. So yeah, I totally get it. As for the texture of the suit itself, same thing. This is a fully sculpted statue, so the Hot Toys figure can't quite capture that same super HD, really textured look 
of the suit itself. Either way though, no matter which one you personally prefer, both options are awesome. Now because I'm sure some of you were curious, I decided to just do it. I thought I'll pop the Hot Toys BVS Batman head on the statue body. I probably won't keep it that way because I don't think it'll look all that good. And boy was I wrong. This looks incredible. I am over the moon with how good this looks. I never thought that this was a combo that I would potentially consider using in my display, but now that I'm seeing it in front of me, I am very, very tempted. The size and chonkiness and overall well-built proportions of the body work perfectly with the Hot Toys cowl. Now it's worth noting that it doesn't snap into place like on the Hot Toys figure, it literally just rests there. But as you can see, the tab of the cowl doesn't cover up the bat symbol, it sits nice and flush. I do have a Jackson Zhu custom cape on there, but it looks phenomenal. I am over the moon. I think that this could potentially be the way I display this in the collection. I know, I've said a couple of times throughout the course of the video that this frees you up from having to sacrifice your Hot Toys figure to display in the armory. But now that I've seen this, I'm really tempted to do it. Do let me know what you think of this display option down in the comments below. Now I for one was super curious how this piece would look in low light because it's very well lit. There are a couple of circular light panels on the bottom and on the top and it creates this very soft diffused cold blue light which coupled with the bluish tone to the back of the armory just pops. It illuminates the suit from the top and the bottom, but it also plays with the shadows and gives you this really mean, ominous look. I love the way this thing looks in low light. I've said I love this thing like 50 times throughout the course of the video, because I do. It really does look that sensational. Currently I have it powered off the mains. I don't know if that's how they're going to keep it going forward because I would love an option to have a battery powered version of this as well just so you don't have to run a bunch of cables in your display but at the very least they've given you the best scenario first. You can literally plug it in and not have to worry about batteries whatsoever which I know will make a lot of people happy. It's literally just one cable out the back plug it in and away you go. Just wrapping up on the 1-6 scale Batsuit statue and armory combo set. Going into this I had no idea what to expect. I mean, I've never even heard of this company before, I've never owned any of their products, so I had no point of reference as to how good or indeed bad this was going to be. But it's neither. It's awesome. I'm super happy with how this thing turned out. But in this instance, Awesome does come with a relatively hefty price tag. The reason I bring it up, because I don't usually, is because that it doesn't really do much of anything. It's more of a display piece. But it has presence. And I think that's the number one thing that you have to bear in mind when deciding on whether or not this is something for your display. It also has a lot of modular pieces. You can take the sculpted cowl and cape off and use the Hot Toys cowl and cape, which I think looks insanely good. Or you can just straight up use the Hot Toys figure in this display, take the statue out, pop the Hot Toys head on it, and then that becomes your BVS Batman for your main display. And the armory itself is really well sculpted and painted and detailed. It also has lights on the top and the bottom, and there is metal parts and pieces for the construction. It's a very sturdy, hefty piece. At the end of the day, do I recommend this? Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I can't wait to build out my 1-6 scale Batcave diorama. This piece right here, the Jazz Inc. Justice Mobile, and whatever other awesome goodies come along, I'm loving this piece right here. Now as I said in the intro, I picked up mine from ToysWonderland.com, but do bear in mind it is third party and it is unlicensed. That means the company that made this, whoever they may be, don't hold the correct intellectual property rights to actually make this item. Keep that in the back of your mind when you are making your purchasing decisions. I have included the link 
in the description below for your reference purposes only to the place that I purchased mine from. While you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.